could the result from part B be the actual number of adults who said cell phones are annoying? No. Why? The answer is going to be no because, as she said, adults must be a whole number. You can't have 0.89 of an adult. You can either have 536 adults or you can have 537 adults. You can't have 0.89 of an adult. What could the actual number of adults be? 537. 537. We use the rules of rounding. Among the 1013 respondents, 399 said that cellular phones are not annoying at all. What percentage of respondents said that cellular phones are not annoying? I want you to try that one. I don't care which way you do it. Among the 1,013 people, 399 said they're not annoying. I want to know this as a percentage. Round it to the nearest tenth. Bring it came in. It's coming around again. Hold on, I'll find it. Alondas, Alondas is not here. Gabrielle Love is not here. Fredasia Golfs, no. Pratt, gotcha. Quinn is here. Amethyst is here. Paige Smith, Paige Smith. Is there 21 on there? Who has not signed the sign-in sheet? I gotcha. <clears throat> Round your answer to the nearest tenth of a percent. <coughs> My math lab will always tell you how they want you to round it. Are you still going? doing a percentage so there's two ways we can do it we can either do it as part over whole equals percent over 100 or we can do it as um, that's probably the way I'm going to do it as part over whole is percent over 100 what is my part <coughs> who 399. 399 that's the part who don't think is annoying what's the whole that I asked 1013 and we are trying to find the percentage so that's going to be our setup so we cross multiply 1013x is 399 times 100 and then we divide both sides by 1013 so 399 times 100 divided by 1013 ended up being 39.38795 or approximately 39.4. Some of y'all may have done the fraction to the decimal to the percentage. If you did the fraction to the decimal to the percentage, you would start out with the 399 divided by 1013. That's your fraction turned into your decimal and then you would get your whoop whoop on, which is the same thing as multiplying by 100. 
and you would have gotten the same thing by doing fraction decimal percent. We good? Questions? Move this over and I can show you the So 399 over 1013 is the fraction. To turn it into the decimal would be 0.3938. And to take that decimal and turn it into a percent, we're going to whoop, whoop it to the right, which would be 39.38%. And then rounded would be 39.4. Don't care which way you do it, it always works. One, percentage issues. I just flip flop two problems so don't freak out when you're looking at your notes. I'm doing the second one first. Continental Airlines ran ads claiming that lost baggage is an area where we've already improved 100% in the past six months. What's wrong with that statement? If they said that they've improved lost baggage 100%, what's wrong with that? Do what? Okay, she says it's not possible. McKnight, what do you say? Why is it not possible? Oh, they're not sure. They're not sure. There's no proof yeah, showing that it's 100%. It's just they're, what they're saying it's bias. We don't know what was lost. Okay. What if they said, you know, 50 bags were lost? What if they gave us a number? Could we say that it's true? Or 100 bags? Or 1,000 bags? If you improve something by 100%, what does that mean? It's perfect. It's perfect. It's perfect. If you lost 100% of your body weight, you ain't there no more. <laughs> okay, you lost everything. So they're saying if they've improved it 100%, they're saying there's no more lost bags. And they can't prevent people from losing their bags. There you go. You can't that, right? So no matter what the number of baggage is, they're saying we've done away with lost bags. Can the airline say that? Mm -hmm. My husband's a pilot. <laughs> he can tell you they can't say that. I mean, they lost his bags and he's pilot. So, for them to say they've improved it 100%, that means they're saying they have gotten away with all lost baggage. That can't happen. Okay? So, if you reduce something, if you improve it by 100%, that means you got rid of the entire problem. No more lost bags. Which we know that's not going to happen. So keeping that in mind, let's look at the next one. A report about the decline of Western investment in third world countries included this. After years of daily flight, several European airlines halted passenger service. Foreign investment fell 350% during the 1990s. So if investment fell 350%, so if what you invested fell 350%, y'all, if the investment fell 100%, what happened? It's gone. The money's gone. So, what you're investing, if it fell 100%, there's no more investing. So how can it fall 350%? It can't. it can't. We can't invest less than nothing. You with me? <coughs> so when you read it, you're like, oh. But then when you think about it, you're like, huh? That doesn't make any sense. You can't invest less than nothing. So if I... If my investment 
if my investment fail a hundred percent, then I am investing nothing. So I cannot fall 350% because that's past nothing. You don't like that one, did you? You give me the stank face. We good? Which one? I flip flop those two problems. I did the second one first and the first one second because I knew you wouldn't like that one. You confused me that. Yeah. I didn't have a number, so that's why. Yeah, I did them back and forth because I knew you wouldn't like the Western civilization. Okay. The Newport Chronicle ran a survey by asking readers to call in their response, do you support the development of atomic weapons that could kill millions of innocent people? It was reported that 20 readers responded and 87% said no, while 13% said yes. Identify the flaw in the survey. <coughs> okay, we hear loaded question. When I look at it, being the math person I am, I look at the numbers. How many people were asked? 20. So when my percentages, my percentages have to be based on increments, based on 20 people. So if I ask 20 people, where's my 20? If I ask 20 people, do you agree that one person out of 20 may have answered it? Said that atomic weapons are whatever. Or two people may have answered it out of 20. Or three people may have answered it out of 20. So, when I look at this question, I think about one person may have said that they support the killing of innocent people, whatever. So one person out of 20 may have said, agreed with the question. Or two people out of 20 may have agreed with the question. Or three people out of 20 may have agreed with the question, etc. So if I come down and I look in my calculator and I do 1 out of 20, or 2 out of 20, or 3 out of 20, or 4 out of 20, and even if I change those to percentages, tell me about... Tell me about those percentages. Those percentages are all multiples of what? What's the first percentage going to be after we whoop whoop it? 5%, 10%, 15%, the next one's 20%. So for them to tell me that 13% said yes and 87% said no, We have some, some hooky rooky something going on. They can't ask half a person or a fourth of a person. Mathematically, it doesn't make sense. The numbers don't line up. If we ask 20 people, you only can get a 1 out of 20, 2 out of 23, out of 24, out of 20. So your mathematical numbers have to be multiples of 5. So these 87 and 13 aren't jihadin with what they're supposed to be matching up with. So that's what I don't like. These numbers right here should be multiples of five. Does that make sense? All right, let's look at this one. A researcher once criticized for falsifying data. Among his data were figures obtained from five groups of mice with four mice in each group. They were given these following success percentages. What's wrong with those values? So how many people were in each group? How many mice were in each group? Four. So that means one of the mice out of four are successful. Two mice out of four were successful. Three mice out of four were successful. So if I put one fourth in my calculator, what do I get out? 25%. If I put two mice in my calculator. If I put three mice in my calculator. So that means all my percentages 
should be multiples of he lion. He just count the tail or a foot or something. He ain't counting the whole mice. You with me? It looks good, but when you actually look at it as a mathematician or as a statistician, the numbers don't match up. Alright, misleading conclusions. Now we can compare anything. Divorce rate in Maine, we are comparing the divorce rate by how much consumption of margarine. Do we know what margarine is? But So, we are looking at how is your divorce rate according to how much butter you eat. And they did this pretty little graph and they showed you all this kind of cute stuff and they showed you how much the black line is how much margarine you ate, how much butter you like, and then the red shows your divorce rate in Maine. That's stupid. And some people are going to look at this and say, okay, I need to stop eating butter. <laughs> Over here to the right, it says correlation does not imply causation. Correlation is a fancy name for a relationship. Relationship does not apply, uh, imply causation. That means just because there's a relationship between butter and divorce rate, that does not mean, does not mean, does not mean butter causes divorce. So just because there shows they're both going downhill, that doesn't mean that the relationship causes the other one to happen. That one causes the other to happen. Just because there's a relationship, there's no, cor I mean, just because there's a correlation does not mean that one causes the other to happen. You know? We cool? I can compare two things. I can compare your shoe size and your IQ. You know, big feet people may be smart. That doesn't mean just because you got big feet you're going to be smart. Okay. All right, that is it for 1.1. That's everything that we need to know in 1.1. Some of you have started the homework. Some of you have not started the homework. Just to kind of show you a couple of things, I'm going to go into the 1.1 homework and spend just a second just kind of showing you what to expect. Remember the preview homework is part of your, um, your grade, and you do have to do the preview homework. 1.1, there are 11 questions. Everybody's question is different. But everybody's one, uh, number one is going to be um, very similar. It's going to say which one is not a voluntary response, but it's going to be um, different questions. So we talked about voluntary response. Voluntary response means you have to voluntarily pick up the phone or fill out the whatever. Which one is not voluntary? A local dentist asks for patients to fill out a questionnaire and mail it back. Quiz scores from college level stu uh, stats course are analyzed. A survey is taken at the mall by asking them to fill out a survey. A radio station asks for call-in responses. Okay, we think B. You hit check answer. We got it right. If you did not get it right, you do similar exercise. You do it again until you get it right. I'm done. I went number two. Um, <coughs> what does loaded? I'm, I'm not going to do all of them. Correlation does not imply a causation. Just because there's a relationship does not mean it's going to cause it to happen. What do you do when you do every member of the population? A census. Good. Um, Okay, um, this one talks about eating meat and dairy products and the organization that told us about this is funding animal rights. So, if we look at the four answers, so there's this group that is funding animal rights that says, I don't want you to kill animals, is telling us not to eat meat and dairy. Okay, 
So, if we look at the first sentence, there appears to be bias, there does not appear to be bias, or there appears to be bias. So you first have to say, is there bias or is there no bias? Yes. So we know it's going to either be A or B. We good? Now, there is an incentive to produce results that are in line with the organization, organization's creed and that of its founders, or there's an incentive to make the results statistically insignificant. A. They're saying these are our beliefs. We don't want you to kill the animals, so you don't need to eat the animals. So that one's going to be A. Alright, so you just go through, you answer the questions. If you get them wrong, um, you go back and you redo them. Um, let me see if there's any more of that. This one is going to be um, multiple questions, and if you miss one of the multiple questions, you've got to do that whole question again. We did one like this. What is the exact value? What is the rounded value? Um, this is the for my shell. So what were the um, percentages? 25, because one-fourth, two-fourths, three-fourths. So, and then once you finish, you can see, I only got two right because I didn't do them all. But once you finish, you just hit save. It shows you what you got right, and you can roll on to the next one. And you can go into any of the other ones. Now, if you want to know, okay, what's on the test? What's, what's Ms. Cooper going to go over on the test? She went over a lot of stuff. Here is the test. Okay. On the test, we have already gone over five of the 20 questions. Number one and number two I have down here. It's not going to be the same question, y'all. Let T represent the number of years since 2005. Interpret T equal 12. Remember doing that one? Just add it. Add them together. Let N represent the number of people in thousands. So N would be 24,000. 24, That's two of your questions on your test. Then, Determine, uh, differentiate between the population and the sample in a study. So if I give you an example, we know the population is the all, the sample is the 423 people that were asked. Um, analyze a sample statement and analyze a sample statement about bias and percent. Now, if you're going, I don't really know what she's talking about. If you come over to the side, it says pages 12 and 13, 29 to 32. Y'all don't have a book. So, what you do is you can come out here and you can get back to the content. So, when you're studying or you want to know, okay, let me figure out what kind of questions she wants to know. One of your little tabs says e-textbook. So, you go into the textbook. And this was section 1.1 you want to look at. So I'm going to go into my e-textbook. And I want to go to, I want to go to page 12 and 13. So I want to go to chapter 1, I want to go to section 1, or I can come up here and say I want to go to page 12. Okay, on page 12, it says I need problems 29 to 32. There's number 29. There's number 30. There's number 31. There's number 32. So you need to know how to do 70% of a thousand among the thousand, 550, what percentage? So you need to know how to do 29 through 32, not number 33, not number 34, not number 28. Y'all with me? Does that help? Okay. Um, so on that test review, 5 through 8, you need to know how to do. So if it's anything other than 5 through 8, 29 through 32, and number 2, you don't need to know it. Those are the only ones that you need to know how to do for your test. Where is that sheet? That sheet is in your <coughs> under content. Um, there's a button off to the side that says unit test reviews right here. And when you click on that, you got to click, on, click it twice. I have every single one, this is test one, test two, test three, test four, test five, and the exam. And you can go ahead and print it out. You can do vertical or horizontal. 
And so I'm telling you that the first test is going to be 20 questions, and I'm telling you what you need to study for those 20 questions. We good? All right, let's start looking at 1.2. Parameter and a statistic. Parameter is when we're talking about the stuff, the stuff about a population. And statistics is when we're talking about the stuff about a sample. Here's the easiest way to remember it, y'all. P for parameter, P for population. S for sample, S for statistic. So if I'm giving you details about a population, we call it a parameter. If I'm giving you details about a sample, we call it a statistic. So if I'm talking about all of FDTC had a phone, all of FDTC did this, I'm talking about parameters. If I said my sample did blah, 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 those are the statistics. So sample, statistic, population, parameter. So for these next examples, it says identify whether the given value is a statistic or is it a sample. Am I talking about a statistic or a parameter? Am I talking about a sample or am I talking about a population? In a study of American airline flights from blah, blah, blah to blah, 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 48 flights were randomly selected and the average mean time, um, arrival time is 8.9 minutes late. So in the problem, am I talking about all flights or am I talking about a few flights? I'm talking about 48 flights, which is a sample. So is it a statistic or a parameter? It is a statistic. So that means that this data is a statistic because it's talking about a sample. A recent California Health interview included 2,799 adolescent residents of California. Am I talking about all Californians? Or a few. a few. So what is this? A statistic. A statistic. All right. According to the Census Bureau, Bureau, the total number of housing units in the United States is blah, 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 blah. Statistic or a parameter? parameter. That one is going to be a parameter because we use the word census. Census, which we know means all. All right, try those last ones, 8 through 12. <clears throat> it's either going to be a statistic or a parameter. and they say, oh, they ask 146 people. But it says the population is 146. So they're telling you that everybody, the all, is 146. So that is going to be a parameter. That one I thought was kind of tough. John, what about number nine? Statistic. We did a study of 400 babies, so we're not talking about every baby. We're talking about a few babies. So that one's going to be a statistic. Um, Kiana, what about number 10? Statistic. Good. In the same study, so we're still doing those 400 babies. Um, Ms. Pratt. Uh, we're looking at all the passengers on the Titanic. 
So that's population. Um, Quinton. That one is a parameter as well. We are looking at all the elements on the periodic table. So if you know population and sample, then you know um, parameter and statistic. Good? Mm -hmm. All right. Next thing, really quickly, is qualitative and quantitative. Quantitative and qualitative.